All right, so welcome to your science, everybody. Time for the lab. This lab is called Magnetic Anomalies. And really, it's to show us what goes on at mid-ocean ridges. Now, this, you can tell this is scanned. This is scanned out of a college level, like uh, intro to ge like a Geology 100 uh, lab course uh, from back when I used to teach that. I stole this, this diagram out of that book. Okay, so potentially difficult, but again, we're going we're gonna to keep it simple here and I'll grind it down to exactly what the one point is that we're trying to get, which if you did the last video, which you should have, hopefully that word's rattling around in your head. If not, we'll figure it out soon. Um, usually we do this with colored pencil and all of that, but not this year. Let's look at what we got going here. So what this is, um, is a record of what goes on with those magnetic anomalies. Now, you just did this in the notes, right? There's the word, symmetry. We're, we're looking for symmetry through this lab, and that's really the only point. Um, what they can do, you don't really want to try to send somebody down to the bottom of the ocean to get rocks, pull them back up and look at them and see the greens orientation or anything like that. That'd be difficult, expensive, if not impossible. There's a way to, there's a sensor that you can use that can detect fluctuations in the, the Earth's actual present magnetic field and what happens to it as it goes through these layers of uh, mafic rock. Where's my stuff? And you get a readout that looks like this. Now, if that's all too complicated, don't worry about it at all. You don't need to have that. Basically, the idea is that you get this pattern, and this pattern is somehow revealing that there have been magnetic polarity reversals through time. And even if you can't get that, all we really got to do is match and look for symmetry, and it's going to be job done. So don't panic here. Don't say, I don't get it. I don't get it. I know how to do this. You know, you're going to know how to do this because it's just like chucking some numbers and drawing some lines. Okay. First thing I'd like to do, you're going to need three total colors. Uh, I'm going to go purple. You don't have to for the first one. And maybe zoom back out a little bit. We're going to do this dotted line right here. It might be easier to do with a line tool. Though it kind of bends. How do you work this line tool? I'm going to extend it right up off the top like that. But if, it, if you miss the that line a tiny bit. It's not a huge deal. All right, so there we go. Purple, or again, whatever color you picked. And we're going to label whatever you just picked there. Mid ocean ridge. I choose purple if I do it. No, oh, there we go. Mid ocean ridge. So the purple line is the mid ocean ridge. And what we expect to see as we've been uh, studying all this is that at the mid ocean ridge, I'll do it up here. The plate should be spreading. One going that way, one going that way. Okay, we can do it down here too. One going that way, one going that way. Now what they've done is they've dragged this device behind a boat and they've figured out what goes on with these magnetic polarity reversals. And then they have to do their best to try to identify patterns in there. And it's not always super easy, but if, if A, if you're trained in this and you know what to look for, it's easier. But B, if you just kind of use your noggin the best you can and try to look for similar patterns on this side and on the other side, then you're going to be good. So they label, these aren't one somethings, two somethings, three somethings. These are just reference points. You could call them A, B, C, D, Steve, Karen, Judy, Martin, doesn't matter. They're just, they're just placeholders. So placeholder one is where the line kind of has this pattern, two, three, four, et cetera, right? Then on the other side, they do one prime. That little, that little like apostrophe thing means prime. And it's just to mean that it correlates, it matches with what's on the other side. So we're gonna have to do that. Probably idea idea would be best to go down to a really skinny pen, maybe even a half a thing. And what we'll look for is where does the two probably live on this side, the two prime? And it's not gonna be perfect, but that big spike right there is probably about as good as we're gonna get. So two prime, three prime, four prime, that one's done. Okay, just like that, get that down. The neck, the, I don't know, I don't remember exactly how this lab worked when it was a real lab in a college book, but the middle two don't have any numbers on them. And sometimes there's no data because the, you know, it's not a, the, you know, equipment malfunctions or, or, you know, waves interacting or something might just mess things up. So you got to do these data runs and hoping you can do the best you can. Um, but what they did down here, one, two, three, four, aiming for the same one, two, three, four that are up here, trying to correlate this all, 
but then we'll try to figure out what's on the other side. Like maybe one prime is clearly right there. Three prime is kind of after like two little spikes and then that. So I'm thinking right about there. And again, if this is confusing, all you got to do is copy exactly what I'm doing and you're going to be just fine, I promise. I'd say four primes right about there. Mr. F, I don't know what I'm doing. Don't panic. Just write these numbers like this, okay? All right, so now we're going to do the same exact thing for this guy. I'm thinking one, two, and look for that pattern. It's probably that. Three, four. And then on the other side, one prime, two prime. Mm. This was a little uglier, huh? Probably right there, three prime. Four prime. Cool. One to go. And then we're most of the way through this lab. One, two, three, four. And one prime. Two prime. That one sticks out nicely. Okay. You're on YouTube, go back and rewind. If you got to find any of those, hit pause and get them right onto your lab. That's got to be done. No way around it. Again, just copy mine. Not too bad. Now right, we're going to do two colors here. Uh, don't do the same color we already did. So I'm going to do green. I'm going to make this a little thicker. And what we're going to do with these two colors is I'm going to connect the one to the one to the one. to the one, like so. I think this might actually be a little easier if I zoom out. And then I'm going to do the same color on the one primes. One and one should match. So one prime, same color, one prime, one prime, one prime, like so. Then we're going to switch colors, go to a different one. And now the twos and the two primes are going to be in that color. I want green and red. Christmassy. Two, two, two. Two. Two prime. Two prime. Two prime. Two. Then go back to the first color. And this is the idea that we're alternating behind a normal polarity, what we call normal because this is the time in our history where humans live and invented compasses and a reverse polarity. So back to the original color for three, 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 three. So basically ones and threes should match. And twos and fours should match. Three, 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 three. And then back to my even number of colors, the red. Four, 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 four. Or four prime rather. There you go. That's it. Okay. What does this show us? And again, what's going to be the key? I'm going to help you with this top part here, but the key to this point on down is going to be using the idea that when we look at this, we see that there is a pattern of symmetry on either side of the mid ocean ridge. You got the ridge, and then as they spread out, we note a symmetrical pattern. Okay. All right. Let's do some measurements. Um, I'm going to hit pause quick to prep it because I'm going to do it on a little piece of work. I don't think this would be very easy for you to do on a Chromebook because if you touch the screen and everything moves, I think it'd get frustrating pretty quickly. So let me just prep. I'll do it all for you. We'll be right back. Okay. So what it's going to do is have us measure two different things. And this, this is, brings up an idea. Uh, what happens if we measure from the ridge out to peak four? So again, I'm going to do it for you because I think doing this in the Chromebook will be pretty frustrating. And I'm ballparking it. It looks like it's to me. Oops, I'm on the wrong side. Uh, 
I'm going to go that it's about 280 kilometers. All right? Convert that to centimeters. Uh, kilometers to centimeters. Who remembers their conversions? I usually have to write it down when I do it. So one, two, three, four. It's five spots to the right with the decimal. So take that 280 and go one, two, three, four, five. Eight million centimeters between those points. And 28 million centimeters divided by 7 million years. Pretty much the same as doing 28 over 7, right? You're going about 4 centimeters per year. Okay. So this plate we did from the ridge to there, that plate is moving at 4 centimeters per year. Now, this next one's a different question, and maybe this is too much for this lab, but what if we measured from peak four to peak four prime? In other words, if we went from here all the way to there. So again, I'm gonna do it for you so that we don't have to monkey with the screens. And this right side, it looks like it goes a little bit faster, which happens. So to me, this looks like it's about 680 kilometers. Means we take these 680 and we add one, two, three, four, five zeros, comma, comma. And this is always, a, I just, maybe it's mean trying to trick people. If it took 7 million years to go from here to here, how many million years did it take for both of these to spread out from each other? And everybody says, oh, I, I got that. That's 14 million years. But here's the trick if it was 7 million years to do this, it was the same 7 million years to do this, right? Like if you have a twin brother and your brother is 16 and you're 16, that doesn't make one of you 32. You've both been alive for those 16 years. So for 7 million years, yes, this was spreading that way. For the same 7 million years, that was spreading that way. So the age here is still 7 million. So then we'll do the math here. And again, just ignoring all the zeros. Pretty much like doing 68 over 7, which means this is going about 9.7. So it's about twice as much. Now, again, that right side is going a little uh, faster. But would we expect this rate to be twice as much? Well, yeah, we should. Because here's the idea. If we went out to uh, route 11 there, it's route 11, right? If we went out to route 11 and I hopped in a car and I drove south at 40 miles an hour, I'd be separating from you if you were standing there at 40 miles an hour. But if we both jumped in cars and went in opposite directions, each at 40 miles an hour, we'd be separating from each other at 80 miles each hour. So it's like the rate as both of these things go out. Now, if that all sounds too confusing, it might be a tiny bit too much for this lab. My focus is still, can you somehow bring the idea of symmetry into this question, this question? This is a question. People love skipping number seven and these two questions. Symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. Um, are the rates different? We could say yes. Second one is about twice as much. And why there's a difference in rates, it's that car example thing I was just saying. Uh, so first one is plate moving from a still point. Second one, two plates moving apart. Not perfect, but I'll do, because I'm, I'm not as concerned with all of that. So, I've said the word symmetry many times. Can I make it bigger? Symmetry. Symmetry, 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 symmetry. If every single bit of this lab has made zero sense to you, you can still get a 30 out of 30 on this lab. If you can bring in the idea of symmetry, read that question carefully, read that question carefully, answer using the ideas of symmetry, and then two here that will also bring up the ideas of symmetry. Read carefully, go slow, and you're going to have it and you're done with the lab, and it was hopefully a fast one. I appreciate your work. We'll see you guys soon.